In this video, we will study about the human endocrine system. Before beginning, if you are new to this channel, make sure to click on the subscribe button below to get all the upcoming scribe educational videos. And also, if you find the content of this channel helpful, you can now support Math Simplified on Patreon.com for the price of a coffee cup that will allow me to make more free educational videos like this. All the links are in the description below. And for more information, watch till the end of this video. The human endocrine system consists of a number of glands located all over the body that secrete hormones and regulate various functions of the body. Modern endocrinology originated in 20th century upon the works of a French physiologist, Claude Bernard, who made a key observation that humans have a constant internal environment which he called milieu interior, which is preserved by various systems of human physiology including the nervous system, the immune system and a set of glands that secrete chemical messengers known as hormones. The human body needs control over its cells, tissues and various processes in the body so that it can function in an orderly and stable way which makes the vital functions like growth, development and reproduction possible. Now this control is mostly provided by three systems in the body, the immune system, the nervous system and the endocrine system. Now the nervous system is in charge or control of various body processes that happen rather fast like movement, breathing etc. And while the immune system controls body's actions related to infections and damage, the endocrine system in general is in charge of the body processes that happen rather slowly. For example, how fast the height of a person should increase or maintenance of a constant level of electrolytes and ions in the blood or body's metabolic rate and various other numerous processes that we will talk about later. The human endocrine system consists of the following glands which are located all over the human body. We have the thyroid gland in the neck which secretes important thyroid hormones which affect nearly all the cells of the body and maintain a proper metabolism of the body cells. Behind the thyroid gland, we have these four yellow parathyroid glands which secrete the important hormone parathormone. This hormone regulates the calcium and vitamin D metabolism in the body. Above the kidneys, we have the two important adrenal glands which secrete a variety of hormones that affect the metabolism of glucose, electrolytes, as well as they secrete the various catecholamine hormones, the adrenaline and the noradrenaline. We have the pancreas which secretes the important hormone insulin which is important for the metabolism of glucose, fats as well as proteins. The reproductive hormone producing glands are very important and they differ in the two sexes. In the females we have the ovaries which produce important sex hormones the estrogen and progesterone and in males we have the testes which produce testosterone. In the end we will study the glands that control the secretion of all these glands which are the pituitary and the thalamus which are located inside the brain. Now let's look at a typical model of how most of this endocrine system works. So we have various endocrine glands which are able to sense about various processes of the body. These glands secrete hormones which act as chemical messengers that are then distributed to whole of the body through the bloodstream to initiate a specific effect. To put this into context, let's take the example of the pancreas. The pancreas for example secretes one of the very important hormones, the insulin. The pancreas has a rich blood supply through which it can sense the concentration of the glucose in the blood. Whenever we eat, the concentration of glucose in the blood rises which is detected by the pancreas, upon which it releases the hormone insulin. This hormone activates most of the cells of the body to take up the extra glucose in the blood which stabilizes the normal glucose concentration in the blood. Now, most of the hormones produced by the human endocrine system are of two types. We have the protein hormones and we have the steroid hormones. While most of them are the protein hormones, there are only few hormones which are of the steroid nature which include hormones like luteinizing hormone, the follicle stimulating hormone and testosterone. Now these hormones when secreted by a gland are carried to the bloodstream and circulated in whole of the body. Now some hormones affect only a specific part or function of the body for example testosterone which affects only the gonads as well as the secondary sexual characters. While there are some hormones which nearly affect all of the human cells which include thyroid hormones which act on almost every cell of the body to regulate the cell metabolism. These hormones exert their actions on the cells by binding to specific receptors. Now these receptors may be located on the cell membrane, they may be present inside the cell cytoplasm or even inside the cell nucleus. 
Once these hormones attach to their receptors, they exert their effect through different mechanisms, which lead to the effect of the hormone. One important mechanism are the ion channel receptors. In this case, the binding of hormone to the receptor causes opening or closing of one or more types of ion channels that regulates the entry or exit of one type of ions in the cell. Now, another very common type of receptors are the enzyme-linked or the G-protein coupled receptors. In this case, when the hormone binds to the receptor, it causes the activation of many enzymes in the cell which exert the effect of the hormone. We also have gene-linked hormone receptors where binding of the hormone to its receptor in the nucleus causes activation or deactivation of a transcription factor of a gene in DNA. Example of this is the steroid hormones which increase the transcription of genes which are responsible for increased protein synthesis in the cell. So first of all, we will take a look at the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is located immediately below the larynx and it is one of the largest of all endocrine glands weighing about 15 to 20 grams. The thyroid gland secretes two important hormones, the T4, the thyroxine and the T3 or the triiodothyronine. 93% of all the secretion of the thyroid gland is the T4 and only 7% of the secretion is T3. Thyroid hormones require iodine for their synthesis in a dose of 1 mg per week. These hormones are protein hormones that bind to their receptors which are mostly located in the nucleus or the cytoplasm of the cell. After that, the thyroid hormones have hundreds of effects on cells like increase in the number of mitochondria of the cell, increase in the carbohydrate and fat metabolism, and increased activity of the various ion channels of the cell membrane. It has many systemic effects like increased cardiac output, increased heart rate, and increased CNS activity. In short, we can say that the thyroid hormones are important in a way that they regulate the basic cell metabolism and activity which ultimately affects the body as a whole. Now, the second gland that we will talk about is the parathyroid gland. It is called parathyroid gland because it is located just adjacent to the thyroid gland or behind it. We have four parathyroid glands, one behind each of the upper and lower poles of thyroid. The parathyroid gland has a vital function of regulation of a constant concentration of calcium and phosphate in the body. It does so by releasing a hormone known as parathormone which mainly acts on bone, intestines and kidneys. Through the intestines, it regulates how much of the calcium should be absorbed in the body. Through the kidneys, it can regulate how much should be excreted and since bones are a large reservoir of calcium and phosphate, it can use that to increase or decrease the calcium and phosphate concentration of the blood. The next endocrine organ that we will briefly discuss are the adrenals. Now these glands are called adrenals because they are present just adjacent to the kidneys, sometimes also known as the suprarenals since they are located above the kidneys. Now if we take a look at the cut section of the adrenal glands, we can see that it is made up of different sections. On the outer side we have the adrenal cortex and at the central part known as the adrenal medulla and both of these parts secrete different types of hormones. Now the adrenal cortex has three layers or zones which are zona glomerulosa which is the outermost layer, we have the zona fasciculata which is in the middle and then in the inner side we have the zona reticularis. These layers secrete different hormones and these can be remembered by a simple mnemonic the GFR which stands for these layers. Now the outermost layer, the zona glomerulosa produces the hormone aldosterone which is a mineralocorticoid. Aldosterone mainly acts on the kidneys to maintain a constant level of sodium, potassium and other ions as well as fluid balance of the body. The zona fasciculata, the middle layer of the adrenal cortex, mainly synthesizes cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid. Cortisol is essential for life as it has permissive actions on multiple organ systems as well as metabolic processes throughout the body. Now, Cortisol is essential for your body to have a proper stress response. It is essential for your body to have a proper metabolism of glucose, fat as well as proteins. It is essential for important normal BP regulation and normal immune system regulation. Now the innermost layer is the zona reticularis which secretes androgenic hormones like the dehydroapindrosterone which are important for the development of secondary sexual characters. 
Now the inner side we have the adrenal medulla which can be considered as a part of sympathetic nervous system. It releases the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine into the general circulation. It is activated when the sympathetic nervous system is activated and it is essential for the classic flight or fight response of the body. So this was the first video on the series on endocrinology. Make sure to watch the second video on this series. The link will be in the description below. In the second video we will discuss about the rest of the endocrine glands and we will also talk about the control of these endocrine glands by hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video and all the other free educational videos on this channel helpful, you can now support Med Simplified on patreon.com for literally the price of a coffee cup. This will allow me to fund my work and make more videos like this and will also unlock some cool Patreon only exclusive content like behind the scenes of these videos, upcoming videos, early notifications and exclusive flashcards and handouts. Make sure to subscribe us on YouTube for all the upcoming videos and also make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for flashcards, notifications and much more.